This conference will now be recorded. Hello guys, welcome to Mark Consulting and uh, guys welcome back. So once again we are going to have a look on the next question. Uh, look at here guys, the next question is, so related to the currency translation, look at here. The next question is what do you mean by translation ratio or it could be what do you mean by currency translation ratio what do you mean by foreign currency translation ratio or ha all are having like gives the same meaning so what do you mean by translation ratio guys now here for this you need to hope you will be able to remember the foreign currency setting guys which where i have covered i'll just show you i've already opened sap here so now whenever we go for foreign currency setting guys i might have told you or might have explained you that first of all we are going to first of all before specifying the currency rates before specifying the currency rate what is happening we are going to specify the currency translation ratio say for example uh okay so i always give example of tata motors so what we are going to give let's suppose here i'm going to give our exchange rate type m let's suppose usd versus inr indian currency and here i'm going to give current date itself 27 and ratio one is to one always we give one is to one always we give one is to one save this now so and i'll once we give this translation ratio then only what is happening guys then we are going to give you the rate we are going to specify the rate okay now we'll do one thing click on inventory and here give a validity again 27th itself i'm going to give and here let's suppose usd and here inr so one usd equals to let's suppose how much inr guys let's suppose uh 100 inr okay one usd equals to let's suppose 100 indian currency now just save it so based on that, if you post a transaction, look at here, if you're going to post a transaction here uh, in current date itself. So now here, what is happening guys? Uh, give you a GL account. Okay. Any debit or credit we are going to take. And here only one USD. Your USD we are going to Okay. So everything is fine. Now just post it. Okay. So now we are going to have a look here. Display and we'll check the so one USD if you're going to display currency, here it is showing. Now here, I'll tell you guys, now here what is happening. So in most of the most of the cases, in most of the cases, what is happening? Translation ratio, we are going to specify one is to one itself. Okay, one is to one itself. But what is the rule of translation ratio? I'll tell you. What is the rule of translation ratio that I'll tell you. Now let's suppose here we are having USD versus Indian currency, USD versus multiple other currencies are there, let's suppose, right? Now, so since our currency value is of course lower than USD, okay? But it is not comparatively, it's not huge in the sense like it's, it's not uh, too much lower, okay? Of course it's lower, but it's not too much lower. I'll put a different example. Let's suppose we are having USD, versus now there is a country called iran iran okay uh, uh, so if you talk about iranian currency it stand for i guess i r r yes this is the so guys here indian usd versus so one usd one usd equals to let's suppose how much indian currency guys it, it might be 65 70 whatever it is right i have specified 100 so i'll keep 100 itself say for example this is not the original figure but say for example but one usd equals to how much iranian currency guys if you're going to have a look on 
uh, Google, it will show around 41,000 some pages will be there or might be 42,000 rupees will be there. Now let's suppose even, I'll, I'll take the amount in round figure itself and I'll keep 40,000, okay? So what is happening guys, look at here, this value is huge value. This value is huge value, right? This value is huge value and if you are going to maintain this rate into SAP, then SAP is not going to accept because because what is happening, SAP is, why SAP is not going to accept guys? Because I'll show you the reason. Because here, after that, after that, even system should have a space to keep this five decimal places also, right? After decimals, five digits are going to be accepted. Okay, so there should be a space for this five this after decimal five digit space supposed to be there right so i'll just do one thing guys here okay so it should be like this i will make it like this okay so it should be like this okay so what about this one is it a, this much length supposed to be there i'll just come here and we'll have a look okay here right if I'm going to maintain the exchange rate for this USD versus Iranian currency, right? Iranian currency means, let's suppose, so 40,000, right? 40,000 I have given. And then here, let's suppose I'm going to give IRR, Contra Center. First of all, system itself is not accepting this. 40,000 is not accepting, right? System will accept if you're going to give 4,000, then press enter system is going to accept why system is going to accept guys because after that we are having a space for this five after decimal five digits space are there right so even here in exchange rate table we are having certain limitations that currencies till four digits only is going to be taken by is is going to be considered right so then what will happen then how we are going to if you are going to specify for 4000 here then what will happen right then this is not the correct picture it's not going to show going to show you the correct picture so i'll show you now since here i'm not having configurations for iranian currencies guys so just assume that our indian currency prices itself our indian currency value itself is is like quite lower okay and one usd equals to 40000 indian currency right one USD equals to 40,000 Indian currency. Okay, let's suppose here, I'm going to specify 40,000, but system is not going to consider. 40,000 is not going to be considered because here the length is too much, right? So system is taking 4,000. System is taking 4,000, right? And you save it. Now, system has taken one USD equals to 4,000 INR. So if you are going to post, if you are going to post the invoice here, then here system will show, if you are going to post one USD, system is going to show 4,000 INR in Indian currency. But what is happening guys? Here, here, 4,000, right? Okay. So here what is happening guys? Now, but the actual value is 40,000. So what is happening guys in this, translation ratio currency translation ratio which shows the relationship between two currency what kind of relation is there one is to one or what so now we are saying that now the currency relation is not one is to one guys instead of it's not one is to one right now what are, what we have given one is to one right if you are able to see here see here guys what we have given one is to one look at here not here, okay, it's not here, here actually. We have given one is to one, right? So now one is to one means system is going to calculate one is to one here we have given and here rate we have given. Let me remove this Iranian currency. It might be creating some confusion to you. Now save it. So now here one is to one. So whenever we are going to post a transaction, okay, whenever we are going to post a transaction, then what is happening guys, now here, one USD equals to 4,000 Indian currency. 
right? But the requirement is one USD equals to 40,000 Indian currency. So this translation ratio is going to be changed here USD and here INR, right? So this translation ratio one USD versus here 10 Indian currency. So what is happening guys? If you are going to post a transaction like one USD, okay, one USD. So here, Indian currency is going to multiply 4,000 multiply 10. So system is going to calculate the correct figure. I'll show you guys here. I'll show you guys here. What we have given here, first of all, let me show you here. So here, USD versus INR, right? So one is to 10. Okay, and then what we have done guys, we have specified the rate also, that is one USD equals to how much? 4,000 INR. So whenever we are going to post a transactions, now what is happening here? What is happening guys? Then system is going to, how system is going to calculate this 4,000 multiply 10 and then system is going to count the value. So I'll just do one thing guys. Now we'll post the transactions. Once again, we are going to use FB50 and then we'll post the transaction. Okay, here USD and then give you again this GL debit one USD itself and here we are going to give. Okay, now so this time if you are going to post one USD, then what is happening? Just save it. System is going to show you how much click on display system is going to convert this USD into local currency in the sense Indian currency and the amount supposed to be 40,000 look at here guys the magic look at here now system has taken 40,000 so what is happening guys this first of all the translation ratio what is the use of translation ratio guys translation ratio shows the relationship between two currencies it is showing the relationship between two currencies that is the first Things. Second thing, in most of the cases, we are going to specify one as to one translation ratio itself. But if the currency value, if the one currency value is quite low or quite lower compared to the second one or compared to the other one, then in that case, what is happening, guys? We are going to specify a different ratio. It could be one is to ten. It could be one is to hundred. In and and better. Instead of saying some definitions and all, what is happening, guys? Better to quote the example itself. Okay. Whatever example I have given, USD versus versus Iranian currency. Likewise, we are having other examples also, right? Uh, there are multiple uh, what to say countries where the currency values are quite low. Why? Because of some in instabilities are there in that country, uh, or else because of huge inflation rates are there in that country. So that is why their currency value is quite low right so uh, like the recent example is there of venezuela where certain uh, what to say crisis is happening and, and people are like like uh, one burger prices are also there in uh, some uh, lakhs or something right so now in that case what is happening for such kind of countries so their currency values are quite low and if you have to if you are going to specify uh, those currencies rates into sap then SAP is not having SAP till four digits. SAP is going to accept because after that, certain decimal places are supposed to be also space supposed to be there, right? So in that case, system is going to take only four digits. But if the currency value is like uh, it is there in 40,000, 50,000, 20,000, in that case, what is happening, guys? Here the ratios we are going to give. Okay, that should become low. So now what we are going to give. We are going to give the ratios. Okay, we are going to specify the ratio. Translation ratio. So in translation ratio, we are going to specify either 1 is to 10, 1 is to 100 as per our requirement. And then based on that, we are going to specify the rate here. We are going to specify the rate here. If we have given 1 is to 10, then what is happening, guys? Whatever the current rate is there. Okay, if currency ratio we have given 1 is to 10, and here, 1 USD equals to 40,000 Indian currency, right? So 40,000 divided by 10. So now what is happening, guys? Look at here, the value becomes smaller, right? Or else if you are going to specify here 100, 1 is to 100, 
then 40,000 divided by 100, so it will be 400 only, right? So this is how easily we are going to specify the rates in the exchange rate table, right? Let's suppose one Indian, one USD equals to four lakh Indian currency. In that case, what is happening, guys? Then in that case, we are going to specify one is 200 or is one is 2000, right? So this is the major use of this translation ratio, guys. Hope you are able to understand what do you mean by translation ratio? Whatever I said, I've specified here, like currency translation ratio shows the relationship between two currencies, right? But in most of the cases, we specify the translation ratio one is to one. But if the both currencies are not comparable, for example, one currency value is having quite low or lower value compared to the other one. In that case, what is happening, guys? We are going to use a different translation ratio. It could be one is to 10, it could be one is to 100, and then you have to quote the example. Or else, instead of saying these many things, simply you can quote the example itself. That is, the currency prices are quite low, and you can quote the example, say, for example, this or this currency pair, and you can give the example that if this is the price. So, if you are going to maintain that rate into SAP, SAP is not going to accept because your the value is quite lower, right? It's there in five digits. It's there in six digits. Here, till four digits, digits only is going to be accepted because after that there will be certain place for the decimal space for the decimal places also, right? Decimal digits also. So in that case, what is happening? We are going to specify a different translation ratio. It could be one is to ten. So what is happening? If we are going to specify one is to ten, then whatever the currency value is there, that is going to be divided by ten. So the value become lower and that price is going to be specified in the exchange rate table okay so this is what the use of currency translation ratio or foreign currency translation ratio during classes what is happening guys simply i used to say that you just specify one is to one here but this is the impact of this translation ratio if you're going to specify one is to ten then what is the impact i have shown you if you're going to specify one is 200, what is the impact? I've shown you guys practically here. This is the use of translation ratio or foreign currency translation ratio. That's all guys, that's all in this session.